The wait is over. Today is the day you're about to see the inside of the Grenadier. So it's a big day, how are you feeling? Yeah, uh, excited. Um, <laughs> pleased to be able to show everybody what we've been beavering away at for the last few years. A lot of people wanted to see the interior for months and months and months. Is it a really intense design process doing the inside? It is intense, um, but also, you know, because it's such a tactile thing, you know, that we, we're gonna sit in there, we're gonna spend time in there. You know, we, we wanted to be really confident that it was, was right. So where did you kind of start in terms of positioning the interior between at the one end in the four by four world, you've got the unbelievably uncomfortable, almost military agricultural end yes. of the market that many of us are familiar with. And the other end, you've got these incredibly overly luxurious, you know, ridiculously overspecced four by four SUVs. Where, where in, the, in the middle are you? You know, both ends of the scale have, have merit. Um, you know, to have something very, very simple, easy to maintain, very sort of analog and, and logical is was really our sort of starting point. But equally, you know, the other extreme other end, you know, why, why shouldn't you be really comfortable and why shouldn't you actually be warm? I feel like we've found a new sort of spot really in between. Hopefully we've got a really good balance in, in the middle. It must be nice though to be able to take the dogs for a walk and not have people shouting across the field, Oi Toby, when are we going to get to see the inside? Yeah, that hasn't stopped. Um. <laughs> I've got to say, first thing, you have completely nailed these seats, haven't you? Yeah. Are you comfortable? This is... <laughs> I'm not used to this level of comfort <laughs> in my 4x4, let me tell you. I mean, they're really, really nice seats. Some people are going to spend an awful lot of time in here. Um, this is their office. Um, so, you know, why wouldn't you at least be comfortable and warm and dry? Which is always our kind of mantra from, from the start, really. Again, it is its own. It's unique. You do not see this kind of switch gear, overhead panel. This is different. Having the central stack means that everybody can be engaged in, in the whole process of, of driving and the journey. Inevitably, big screen, yeah. but what, what's it for given, I mean, this vehicle has far less in the way of electronic control systems. Yeah. And I mean, you can choose what, what goes on there to, to a degree that you've got all your sort of performance that's going on there. But then you've got all your sort of entertainment stuff through there. You've also got all your off-roading. So would this interface include sat-nav and all that kind of stuff? Or are you basically moving towards a world which says we all carry the computers around with us all the time yeah, as a phone? exactly. Absolutely correct. And, you know, our thinking was that by the time this had actually come to production, that whatever sat-nav we'd put in there would probably be out of date. Um, you know, it moves so, so quickly, and yet we're all walking around with really powerful computers in our pockets all the time, so let's utilise that. And is, and is that generally in, in the interior? I'm, I'm thinking about things like, you know, seat adjustment and all the rest of it. Is, have you tried wherever possible to get rid of electronics? Because that's yeah. been one of the big, big arguments, isn't it, about yeah. the users, is saying, please, 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 do not make this vehicle overly complicated, yeah. unnecessarily complicated. For sure, and yeah, so in the seats we have no motors. Um, we have this novel thing called a lever uh, to, to operate the seat, to go forward and back and up and down and you know, uh, make all the adjustments because sure, you know, we, we could have put motors in there, but it's just an added complication. And then if we are going to hose this vehicle out, the last thing we want is water flying around electric motors. So up to the wading depth, you know, everything's waterproof. And uh, just picking up on that point, you can actually wash out the footwell. Yeah, so there's uh, plugs in the floor that you can remove to drain it out. So. Ideally, what I'd like is a vehicle which you can hose down outside and inside. You know, the farmer got in and when he got out, he could hose it down and wash it out. And you know, that's what we'd like to do with the new one. 
And so just going back to the switch gear, how have you divided it all up in, in terms of, say, so what do these different panels do? Okay, so we've got all the sort of air conditioning. Um, we've got basically the sort of the, the comfort, if you like, in here. So it's your window heaters and essentially the sort of things that keep, keep you warm, but you know, parking assist and eco sort of cut off things for the engine. But then all the off-road gear then is kept separately. So we're not searching as we're driving along going, I really need to turn off the diff. Where are they? Oh, that's the air conditioning. Oh, you know, it's, it's kind of broken down into very separate um, areas. And so obviously conventional place for high low range, yep. automatic gearbox controls yep. in there. What's this? This lovely touch screen that we have. Um, obviously that's not going to work if you're wearing wet, thick gloves. So you've always got the sort of the manual option on top. So you can then do everything you can on the on the screen you can use on the central rotate rotary knob as well and the switch gear it, this is this is chunky stuff yeah. it's, it's so big big hands yeah. gloves on you can still operate all this stuff. Yeah. oh god i love the fact that it makes that noise <laughs> there is something quite cool about you know kind of engaging all your switches and you know in your head you're you're you know, flying an airplane or driving a ship or you know, there's just something a bit more kind of fun about it I guess. This is I think it's just a brilliant idea it, it's it's well executed for lots of functional reasons mm. and aesthetically it you know it, it definitely ticks boxes from my point yeah. of view um, it just looks great it looks as if it means business and it and it does so you know it's not fake from that point of view. No it's just, there's always a thing that you know it had to be authentic we didn't want anything that was sort of frivolous or arbitrary you know everything has a has a reason and a function and and if it if it didn't then it didn't really make the cut so you know just having all these auxiliary switches already wired in so that you know if you do decide you want to go and put on you know, extra you know, driving lamps or you know camping gear or you know winches then you're not kind of ripping headlinings down that you'll never get back in quite the same way that it, it came down in the first place or you're drilling holes you know it's all kind of there ready to go. It's literally just sort of hook up the wires and, and off we go. Uh, talking of customising the interior to your own needs, the steering wheel is an interesting <laughs> thing, isn't yeah. it? We really like the idea that it kind of grows with you a little bit and actually this is made of, of really beautiful saddle leather that will kind of mature with, with time, it will grow and it will gain a patina that becomes very sort of personal to the, to the people that are driving it all the time. So that kind of actually is a living element of, of the vehicle as well. You know, we can do that because we're a new automotive company. We're not governed by years of people telling us that that's what they want. We can sort of take a punt and say, well, look, you know, we, we think this is a really nice, engaging element. It feels really nice. It feels like real leather. The red toot button with a, yeah. with a bicycle on it. Not seen that on a car before. No, it's amazing, isn't it? What is it? Often when you're kind of approaching a cyclist, if you want to make them aware that you're there, you know, to, you often try to do a, a sort of a gentle kind of hoop and it ends up as a full-blown klaxon which scares the living daylights out of everybody. Or you're seeing a friend or something, but you know, you never quite get it right because you're hitting the middle of the wheel and it ends up as a, comes out as an aggressive <laughs> sort of thing. And no push to start button. No, we've got a traditional key. A proper a key. A proper key. How many sheep can you get in the back? <laughs> well, lengthwise, uh, you can only get one in, but three. Three, good, excellent. Overall, I tell you, the big thing, you, you get a real sense of the amount of thought that's gone into this, but also the number of things you've had to think about. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost as much as the, as the exterior, I think. We've been really kind of brutal in drilling down into what you really need, what you don't really need. It's a pretty close match to some of the, the earlier sort of first thoughts, really. So, uh, yeah, very, very pleased. So was the wait worth it? Well, I'm sure you'll let Grenadier know, but if you already like it so much you want one, well, good news, I've just heard you'll be able to reserve one from October. See you next time. <laughs>